barring anything significant coming out of that interview, this probably would be our last uh, press conference for this evening. All right, you are listening we'll to a press go. conference from Highland Park. Not Let's sure listen in. It's all going to work out. As you know, it's a, a work in progress. So please uh, bear with us and let, let the process play out. Appreciate it. I can take any quick questions, but I may not have the information because we're talking 15 minutes. Was there a chase at all? There was a, a brief pursuit. Absolutely. A brief pursuit. High speed? Uh, I don't have the speeds. How and were it, officers able to get him to stop? He ultimately came to a stop. The person of interest that we're talking about here is Robert Cremo the third. That is correct. The person we came out initially and gave you the information on. He, that he, stop ended in Wesley and 41. Wesley and 41. Who spotted him? Uh, it was a North Chicago police officer who was stationed on 41 with his eyes open. And what would it take for this person of interest to be referred to as a suspect? Uh, again, yeah, we're going to have to positively connect them to the scene, and, and really, we want to do our due diligence. You know, we put the name out there. We want to make sure we have. Uh, a number of things that would imply that, you know, this is a good person of interest, but in, uh, you know, due deference, we want to make sure, and you all understand that, we want to make sure that we're following the process and doing everything we need to do uh, to bring this to a successful conclusion. Do you know what's he alone? Yeah, at this point, I can't just, that's where we're at. Do you know if he was alone? Uh, I don't know that answer. Okay. He was spotted in North Chicago. North Chicago on Wilson. 41. Yeah. Lake that is correct. You say Wesley. 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 Yes. Wesley. 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 Correct. All right. So again, unless something significant happens tonight, you know, we're going to let the process play out. We are still continuing to process any information that's coming in. We certainly want to make sure that if anybody's got information, video, or anything of that nature, to please. This doesn't necessarily mean it's over, but we're certainly uh, we're encouraged that we have a person of interest. But again, we're going to pursue and continue to pursue everything that comes in. So thank you very much. All right, you have been listening to an update from police in Highland Park, Illinois. It does appear they have the person of interest now in custody. On the right of your screen, uh, it is the silver Honda Fit that authorities put out uh, that they believe that 22-year-old Robert Cremo uh, was driving. Uh, he is the person of interest that they are linking to this deadly shooting at the 4th of July parade earlier today. Uh, we picked up this press conference right after they started, but they said there was a brief pursuit and this person of interest is now in custody. Uh, the investigation will continue. Uh, there are still authorities on the scene at the uh, tragic site of the parade earlier today uh, where they will be gathering evidence. But a major sigh of relief for the public um, in the northern suburbs of Chicago. Uh, for perspective, Highland Park is about 25 minutes north of downtown Chicago. Uh, this uh, apprehension happened just north of there in a community called Lake Forest and uh, Highway 41, which um, goes north-south in both directions. And you can see uh, the authorities surrounding that person of interest, um, Robert Cremo III's um, silver uh, car. I want to bring in Kelly Beeson now. She has been in Highland Park for the last several hours. Uh, covering uh, the situation. Kelly, for so many in that community who were directly impacted by this shooting earlier today and who have been sheltering in place for the last few hours, um, this, is, this is news they wanted to hear. Absolutely. It's positive news, Marnie, but then again, nothing reverses the damage that was done earlier today. I'm here out in Highland Park at the scene of that parade route, and I can tell you that it is eerily quiet out here tonight, Marnie. And there are remnants just behind me of what parade goers left behind hours ago. And so while this community will begin a long process of healing, some positive news tonight, but again, a very somber atmosphere out here in Highland Park, Illinois. Kelly, uh, the process of going through that crime scene and the chaotic mess that is left behind, uh, walk folks through uh, what is behind you, what investigators are currently doing um, in the chaos that ensued after the gunfire. Sure. Well, we can start with that gun. That was a very, that's going to be integral to this investigation, Marnie. Investigators are going to be combing through the area where the shooter uh, appeared to be shooting from on top of the building. We know that police said earlier today that they believe that the gunman used a ladder in an alley to get to the top of that building in order to open fire on this parade. And I'm going to step away and just show you some of the items along this parade route. It really tells the story, I 
think, itself of the chaotic scene that ensued here just hours ago. You see lawn chairs that are left behind, water bottles, open snacks, uh, baby carriages. I mean, it was just incredible the amount of chaos that happened here just hours ago. And again, this community reeling from the loss. There have been uh, no cars or vehicles that I've seen. Businesses have closed by. Nearby fireworks displays have been canceled because of this tragedy, Marnie. Right. Uh, so for so many hours, um, a, a suspect on the loose considered armed and dangerous. Fireworks displays across the community had been canceled tonight. Um, Kelly, can you talk a little bit about the folks who had to shelter in place? Um, obviously, that is now lifted. Um, what are they telling people in that community? You know, we haven't received a firm update on guidance from police as to what residents nearby should be doing. But I can say that we've been out here all day and we have not seen very many cars on the road. Now, we're in a perimeter uh, that's cleared for media only. However, even in the area surrounding where we are tonight, you don't see people driving stores have closed, restaurants have closed. Uh, again, there's an eerie quiet out here in Highland Park. Investigators and police officers have been making their presence known. They've been walking through this area. Patrol cars have been driving through this area as well. So again, they're letting the community know that they're here. They're continuing their investigation. But in terms of specific guidance for residents, uh, we're awaiting an update from police on that at this hour, Marnie. Well, and the other thing, Kelly, is the gathering of evidence. And police have asked the public, anyone who was at the parade this morning who might have photos or video, to pass that along to authorities as they try to piece together all of the events. Absolutely, and I'm so happy that you mentioned that. We were actually speaking uh, earlier this evening with former FBI agent uh, Jennifer Koffendoffer about how important, how critical, uh, you know, maybe even the most seemingly uh, innocent photo or, or photo that had nothing to do with obviously what, what transpired. Maybe you were just taking a picture of you and your family along the parade route before these events transpired. All of that evidence will be so helpful to investigators. And so they are pleading with the public. Anything you saw, heard, any pictures or video you, you took prior to, after, or during this tragic event, please hand that over. It will be so critical in this investigation moving forward. And Kelly, uh, we know six people lost their lives this morning at this parade. At least 30 people were injured. Have authorities? Um, indicated the extent of the injuries and and we're hearing the ages from 8 to 85 anything more you can tell us about the people who have been hurt yeah it's such difficult news to hear and we have been receiving updates from medical teams at press conferences throughout the day we know that the six people who were shot and killed along this parade route were all adults there were as you mentioned several others injured a handful of those people at least four to five were children we know that one of those children was in critical condition earlier today so we are awaiting updates from medical teams they have been very positive in their updates saying that you know the medical system worked well together in order to provide a quick response to these victims who were involved in this horrific event. They said from blood donation to individual doctors and nurses, there was intense coordination uh, that really worked well today. Of course, you know, six lives lost is a tragic outcome. However, the people who were injured are receiving the best care uh, from what we understand, Marnie. Yeah, just a tragic situation for all. Uh, Kelly Beeson live in Highland Park, Illinois. Kelly, I will be checking back in with you throughout the evening. Thank you. And just to update you once again, police now have the person of interest involved in this deadly shooting at the 4th of July parade in custody. A North Chicago police officer spotted the suspect's vehicle driving on Highway 41 in Lake Forest, Illinois, and that suspect has now been apprehended. The investigation continues. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.